Hello and welcome to Football Manager 2018. This is the money bag. This is the beta save we're going to be doing on the channel with PSG. If you've not seen the trailer for it, then I suggest you go and check that out before we watch this because that's quite funny, to be fair. Chase Dingleheimer seems to take the, the limelight there, not me, which is a little bit, a little bit annoying there. But what are we waiting for? Let's get started now in Football Manager 2018. I can't wait. Un, deux, trois. Dans les campagnes, urgir ses forces soldats. Hello and welcome to the money bags. This is the brand new save we're doing on my channel for the beta. And of course, you just seen that lovely intro that I made. I'm not really good at making intros, so I hope you enjoyed like the French rap uh, that I've got going on there. It's a little bit odd. So basically, we have joined right here at the start of PSG. This is literally my first look at the game, uh, my first little look, my first day on the job. Uh, we're not going to play any games today, purely because it's a brand new football manager game and there's so many new tabs and concepts down there, you know, dynamics, medical centre, all that kind of stuff that's brand new. So I want to sort of take you through that first. You know, we'll look at the team through that, we'll see what's going on. Um, and then next episode we'll start playing the games in the league. But I just want to sort of take this time to, to show you the team and show you the new concepts as well. Because I think this is going to be the most interesting part because all these new things are essentially what's going to make this game a lot better than the previous game. So let's go and have a look at uh, some of these new things then. First of all, we'll have a quick look at the squad. As you can see here, this is the squad uh, squad screen looking maybe slightly different. I don't know. A few graphical changes in terms of the icons for the morale and things like that. I'm sure this is a bit bigger as well. Just looks slightly different graphically. It looks a lot cleaner, actually, I think, as well. So I'm quite interested by that. That's quite cool. Uh, of course, what we want to look at is Neymar. That's the thing that we're most interested about here. Neymar down here. Um, as you can see, this screen has changed a little bit as well. Just looks slightly different graphically. Um, we'll sort it all out for next time because I don't, I don't want all these, these text here. I want different things down here. I'll sort it all out, don't you? worry but uh, Neymar obviously the man we're looking for here valued 85 million apparently despite being brought in for for 200 million essentially um he's only been valued at oh where's he gone now he's down here again only valued at 85 million on this which is which is interesting I think uh, but on half a million a week which is absolutely ridiculous so obviously this is the man that we're very interested by but let's look at the dynamics this is what I'm interested by so Cavani who obviously in real life according to the media, has quite a bit of clashes with Neymar as a team leader, a team influencer, a top influencer, according to this, which is which is pretty interesting. Uh, Thiago Silva there as well. Um, all sorts of stuff looking on here, which is quite interesting. So match cohesion, apparently we're average at that at the moment, but that's pre-season. We're sort of getting to learn how to blend with each other. So that's I'm not too concerned about that. Dressing room atmosphere, very, very good. That's nice to see. Uh, there's one player at the club who should be considered to be very happy, uh, which is nice, actually. Uh, no unhappy players as well. So... That's interesting. That's really nice to see. Um, obviously, they've not taken into account the, the Cavani and Neymar supposed rows, I guess. However, there's, there's a bit of concern on managerial support because I've only just come into the side, so they're not really sure what to expect from me. So that's interesting, I suppose. Let's have a look at the quick hierarchy then. Uh, as you can see, I'm the manager. Brilliant. Uh, Thiago Silva, Cavani and Thiago Motta are the team leaders in there. Highly influential players. Neymar is in there, which is interesting to see. Um, obviously, he won't be a team leader yet because... He's not there, he's not been there for that long really. But it's interesting that he's a highly influential player, I think, having just come into the side. As you can see here on the uh, on the, on the feedback from it though, uh, we've got some good team leaders apparently, that's quite nice to see. Uh, Cavani is approaching the peak of his career and should be looking to retain him. However, if you watched the trailer yesterday, because uh, we accidentally spent 200 million on Neymar when the board thought we spent 20 million, uh, we've got to release a lot of these players because we're struggling for money. So Cavani is a player that we're thinking about leaving the club at some point soon. So we'll have to see what happens there. Obviously there's a row with Neymar as well. We'll have to try and, what I want to do essentially is try and create a row with them because I want to see how the dynamics work. I want to see what happens when two players get into an argument. So that's kind of what I'm going to try and force I think in this to make it interesting obviously. We're in the base of two weeks. So this two week little series, hopefully we can just try and make as many massive problems in the dynamics as possible and just see what happens essentially however that all these team leaders are approaching the end of their career so they should uh, should be looking to retire soon so perhaps we need to look at one, getting one of these players uh, to become a team leader in the next few seasons all right here are the social groups then this is what i've been quite interested to see now in the core social group there's quite a few players they've been at the club quite a while uh, they share similar levels of professionalism as well so uh, Neymar just signed but he's in this core social group which is interesting to see I would have thought he'd be perhaps in the others to be fair doesn't fit in yet uh, but obviously all the team leaders are in there uh, a few highly influential players are in there and mostly uh, influential players are there which is nice to see the secondary group are similar age players who have been there for the same time so I guess these are kind of like more of the youth players that have come through uh, the younger guys that's interesting to see they're not influential players uh, yet they could be in the future if they stick around for quite a while secondary social group B 
Uh, only three players in there, Mbappe, Rabio, and the other guy that I can't pronounce. It's the first episode of a new series, and I'm already saying I can't pronounce it. And then Hatton, Ben Arthur, Julian Draxler, and Yuri uh, just don't fit into any groups, apparently. So perhaps these are the players that we may want to move on. Maybe not Draxler and Ben Arthur, but Yuri, this chap. But if he doesn't fit in anywhere, and uh, by looks of things, won't be used all that much, maybe we try and move him on. Is he the best left-back we've got at the club? He's not, but he's up there. So he's, he's a player that I'd be happy to leave if I'm honest with you because he's, he doesn't fit in anywhere uh, unless we have have we just bought him because that could be um, part of the reason why he's down there history yeah he's only just moved so he's not a player that we'll be looking to leave because we've only just bought him team happiness then everyone's got smiley faces looking down here this is what I like to see I like smiley faces how long the smiley faces will last for not entirely sure but as long as they're still happy and overall happiness is you know in the green slash this slight orange slightly happy type of thing then I'll be happy Let's have a look at the medical centre as well then. Now apparently there's nothing going on here, so you've got risk assessment of players injured, returning from injuries, that kind of thing. Uh, but nothing is really in here at the moment because no one's injured yet, which is nice. Uh, but as we look through here, I'm sure more of this will become more important as we as we go through a season. Um, but luckily no one has picked up injuries yet, so that's nice. Imagine if someone was injured on the first day when I got here, that would be absolutely awful, wouldn't it? What else is new then? Training. Let's have a look at training because... There was sort of hints that this could change, but I don't think anything really has changed at all looking at it. Um, it all looks very much the same to me, uh, even down to the individual bit here. It looks very, very similar. Uh, the coaching bit, very, very similar. So, unfortunately, nothing too much here, as far as I'm aware from this little glance. I'm sure as we go on, there may be some differences, but unfortunately, not a huge change in training, which I was kind of hoping for. Obviously, the tactics screen has changed massively, but we won't delve into that too much this episode, uh, purely because I just want to, to focus on these new features and look at the team and things like that, what we're going to do. Um, we will ask the assistant, though, what kind of tactic he recommends. He recommends this at the moment. We can do a little quick pick. Apparently, there are spaces in the team, but a lack of players to choose from. Uh, I mean, I don't know why he's not quick picking for me. I just want to quick pick and, and, and see what happens, because I want to just know what players are decent. I mean, apparently we can't quick pick right now. A uh, little bit annoying. I guess I have to do some meetings first, or something like that. But um, this looks like the base formation we're going to be playing with. I would assume we'd play with an attacking midfielder instead of a defensive midfielder. I think in the league we're in, we have to be attacking like that all, all the time. So we should get some decent results with this formation. I think this would be the main formation we use because we've got to utilise Cavani, Neymar, Mbappe, um, Lucas as well, I suppose, Rabiot, all those kind of players. So this is kind of what we're going to be focusing, I think. This is the formation I had in mind, at least. Apparently, this is a lot more modular this year, so you can sort of move things around and do things that you want to do. Um, this pin might do something. It, oh, it does a lot there. Um, it opens up this part. So before, this, this screen was at the top, wasn't it? And now it's been moved here, so we can just pin... Unpin. Oh, we can reduce. Oh my goodness, this is. See, it's all very different. We have to get used to this. I like this kind of little setup actually. This looks kind of decent because I get to see all my players' information, and then I can move it like this to sort of fiddle with this part of it. But I don't know because before it was good because you could see everything like this anyway. So I, I don't know if this is a step back or not. Looking at this, I'm not sure if I like it or not. If I'm being honest with you, I'm really not sure how how I like this, but. We'll have to see going forward, I suppose. It's not, I mean, you can see your role availability. That's that's the most important part. But I do like seeing the other stats as well. So it's, we'll work out how it works. Obviously, after I've used it for a little while, it will look better and things like that. And, you know, I'll get used to it. But as it stands right now, I'm not sure if I like it or not. Now, match plans is something that I was very interested to see. Um, I assume it's sort of, you can add a scenario to this apparently tactic. Uh, scenario is winning by, yeah. So if you're losing by a goal, you can, you know, with 10 minutes to go, you can bring in a match... Uh, plan and that will say like oh with one if we're one goal down we need to get a goal let's do this this and this to try and get that goal so you don't have to do it yourself in game you can just sort of select some presets which I kind of like actually so I, I will be using this quite a bit I'll be making a lot of these uh, as we go forward I like this match plan idea so this will be something that we use quite a lot so I've sort of taken you through the basic parts of new features and things like that obviously as I play more, I'll discover more and I can show it to you. But they're the sort of key things that I wanted to show you right off the bat there. Uh, now we're going to go to the important part and look at the finances. How much transfer budget have we got? 44 million to play around with. That's that's a nice amount. I would have expected a little bit more perhaps. I guess we have just paid 200 million for Neymar though. So that's kind of acceptable, I, I suppose. Uh, we've got 250 million or so, 250 million, 250,000 pound a week, I suppose, spare in the wage budget, which is quite nice. Although that currently committed, they've got the Although the committed spending actually is 100,000, 150,000 more. So maybe we only have 100,000 uh, spare in that wage budget. Scouting budget, of course, that's quite big. I think we should be fine to just scout the world with that. Obviously, 
the new scouting thing came in and we can now do all sorts of things. I'm going to have to work out how to, how to do it uh, because I really don't have a clue. If we, look, if we click on the scouting budget here, um, that just adjusts it apparently. I kind of want to know how I change my scouting knowledge and budgets and things like that. I mean, I want to tell my scouts to scout everywhere in the entire world because I want to get players from I don't know, Zimbabwe and things like that. But is it under knowledge perhaps? Knowledge, that, that makes sense to me. It could be under there. I, mean, I like this new map thing. This is really interesting because... I don't know, it looks a lot clearer and nicer to me. I do like this. Uh, you can see country by country as opposed to just like region. So that's pretty cool to be fair. I like this. That's a nice improvement there. Oh, this is what I was looking for, the, uh, the, the packages. So we've got world senior package and world youth package. Um, I don't know how to change that. I mean, not that I really want to change that. Oh, I can, I can change it up here. Uh, but the top bracket for absolutely everything. So that is fine by me. You know, that's what I want. So... No changes need to be made there. We just need to scout players out now, essentially. So that's 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 decent. So with 44 million to play around with, I want you to tell me in the comment section down below who we should be signing. Uh, if we look at the team report and look at the squad depth quickly, uh, we can sort of see that Cavani is our best striker because Neymar's going to be playing on my left wing, I'd imagine. Uh, Pastore in the middle and Di Maria on the right-hand side. That's probably what we're going to do. I think we probably need a better attacking midfielder in the middle. Uh, Verratti and Rabiot in the middle of the park. Uh, I'd probably be inclined to get another central midfielder as well to replace Rabiot. Uh, Defence, I'm happy with that for now, I suppose. Marquinhos, Thiago Silva in the middle. Um, Danny Alves on the right. I'd want another left back and another goalkeeper maybe, but for now I think that's okay. I think my main calling will probably be centre of midfield to get someone else in there who's probably decent. I mean, Verratti, what does he play as normally? Advanced playmaker. So I'd like to have someone deeper there, like a ball-winning midfielder to sort of sit in there. That'd be quite good. Uh, Rabiot, what does he do? He's a deep-line playmaker, so there's clash in there already. So I think I do want to bring in someone in midfield. I think that's probably my, my, my first port of call. So I think that's kind of where we're going to leave it on this first episode. I know it's a short one. I know it's probably not the most interesting, but I just want to sort of introduce things, you know, have a quick little overlook at the new dynamics and a medical centre and the new scouting sort of systems. And I just sort of want to get, get a video out there because uh, I'm a bit late to the whole party. I was, yesterday when the game came out, uh, I was I was at my girlfriend's birthday, because it was her birthday yesterday, so with, with, we're out with her family and things like that. So I'm a little bit late to all this, so I want to just try and get back into it straight away now and, and get making videos and get making content for you so this little quick episode just sort of introduce you to things tomorrow i guess we start properly that's when we start playing games uh, we'll get straight to the league games there we'll zoom through these friendlies and things like that and, uh, and tomorrow there'll be a brand new episode for you out there with gameplay and i promise you uh, and in fact it may be out tonight you know i may feel lucky and, and get one out for you tonight but uh, so thank you very much for watching make sure you like and subscribe to the channel for more foot manager 2018 content and i'll see you tomorrow <laughs> Tu as muscle dans vos bras, égorgez vos fils, vos campagnes. Tu veux cet ordre d'esclaves, de traite et de roi conjuré Pour qui cet ignoble d'entrave sait faire des longtemps préparés oh,